Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and this is a series on making a dungeon crawler, uh, like the game you see here. And we left off last time in part two. We created our Fane character right here. You see, she can move around, up and down. And you also see that there are these artifacts when we move. So first thing, we're going to fix that, and then we're going to add an enemy, time permitting. Um, well, it shouldn't take that long to to fix these tiles, but it might. So what we're gonna have to do is actually extrude these tiles. So extruding um, uh, simply means that we are going to, as you can see by this picture here, basically add some spacing in between our tiles. All right, so there's a, there's a whole explanation of, of how this effectively works, but there is this command line tool on GitHub called uh, Tile Extruder from Mike Westhead. The same guy that wrote the modular game worlds and phaser article that I had shown in part one. Great series. Uh, this tool is also really good or really helpful to fix this problem. So I've already got it installed, but if you don't, uh, you'll have to use NPM and install Tile Extruder globally. That's the uh, recommended way to use it. And so what we're gonna do, I'll show you how to, how to use this. So we're gonna stop our, our server here and in our dungeon crawler project, we, in our public folder, so see public, we have in our tiles folder in public, right here, dungeon tiles. So we're gonna extrude these tiles. So I have tile extruder installed and here is what we got to do. We got to give it our tile width, tile height, the input tile set, and then an output uh, tile set, or uh, tile PNG rather. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to basically found these directions. There's really no more to it than that. Then we're going to make some updates in phaser, and you'll see that it'll be fixed. So first thing, tile width. Actually, I think she's, she's got shortcuts. So dash W, a little less typing, 16, I believe, dash H, height, also 16. That is our tile set is 16 by 16. Uh, next, input, dash I. We are going to import as input our dungeon tiles.png. And then dash O is output right here, right here, dash O. And we are going to call this dungeon tiles extruded.png. Is there anything else? No. Now you could specify uh, your own custom margins and our spacing as necessary, but we don't need to. We're just going to do it. Okay, it's done. And you see we've got dungeon tiles extruded that PNG. You can even look at it. You'll notice it looks mostly the same tile. So this is the original, right? And this is the extruded version. You can see there is, you know, more more gaps in between each tile, right? You can see, right there, right there. These are definitely together, and these are together, if you recall. Okay, now we have the extruded. Let's go to preload, and we're going to load our extruded tiles instead of our normal tiles. Save that. I'm just gonna run it and show you what it's gonna look like with these new extruded tiles. Refresh. So you see, it looks terrible. What do we do? So what? Uh, don't worry. Yeah, we can we can fix this only because we should do more reading. Because down here, I think it'll tell you that you need to using extruded tiles. There's a couple ways to do this. You go back to tiled and then change it, but that's that's a lot of work. Alternatively, what you can do is simply when you're doing the add tiles that image in phaser, specify a new one margin one pixel margin and two pixel spacing. And so we are gonna do that. So one, two. Just so that we can offset it for what we just did in the extrusion process. And so now we're gonna go and you see the tiles look lovely. All right, so there is tile extrusion using the tile extruder. Now we are going to end this video and then pick it up again in the next video for making an enemy.